Got a work order for a storage shed where a breaker keeps tripping. Test it for myself, and sure enough, the breaker trips. Gonna take a quick peek underneath the petticoat to see what we're dealing with. Four screws, remove the cover. We're gonna remove the wire from the breaker. The breaker holds, so we know we're not dealing with an issue with the breaker. I'm gonna use my multimeter on ohms to see what the resistance is between neutral and this wire. Turns out 0.5 ohms of resistance at 120 volts equals right at the potential draw of 240 amps of current. Obviously, this is an instant trip of the breaker, so now I've got the lovely task of tracing the wire out to figure out what the issue is. About 10 feet away, we trace the wire to this junction box. We got three wires, power coming in and two going out. Go back to the panel, the short went away, so I know it's not an issue with this first section of wiring. I'm gonna ohm out between ground and both of these wires, and it turns out it's the one on top. It heads over to this outlet. I'm not suspicious of the outlet, so I'm gonna ignore it for now and continue tracing. I'm going to leave my multimeter on continuity between this power wire and ground. I'm gonna start with the most obvious thing by flipping these light switches and no change. Head across the shed, tracing out wires, and I come to this really ugly junction box where the wires don't even have a wire nut. We've got four wires. I'm not sure which way to head from here, so I'm going to disconnect these wires and figure out which one the power wire is and figure out where the short is at. I've got four wires here. By touching them all together, I can figure out which two I can eliminate. After I've eliminated the top two wires, I need to figure out which one of these is the power wire and which one heads to the fault. Easiest way to do that is with the multimeter still hooked up. I can put this screwdriver to ground, touch each of the wires to the screwdriver, and whichever one beeps is the power wire. Now I at least I know which direction I need to go to find the fault. It leads me to this beautiful J box over on one of the pillars. The inside looks like crap, but I'm not seeing any shorts to ground. This junction box wasn't connected, so I'm going to use my electrician's hammer and get it reinstalled on the pillar. And of course, with this building being used for storage, I can't get a ladder in here. So I just get to pretend to play Spider-Man. At this point, the wire heads over the top of a sliding garage door trace it out as far as I can on the left, then I'm going to go to the right side and continue the tracing. And of course, as soon as I climb up here, I realize it goes to the light switches down below. Flip the first switch, the short goes away, and I'm super confused. And now I can't get the short to reappear. Take a quick phone call, come back, and now when I flip the switch, the short comes back. If I wasn't confused before, I definitely am now. At this point, I've got no choice but to rip into the light switch box. After all of the tracing, it appears that I have hot and neutral hooked to this switch. In order to confirm that this is indeed the issue, I'm going to put everything back together except for this light switch and see if the fault goes away. Get the first junction box wired back up. Get the section junction box wired back together. And for now, just lightly connect this wire. Head back to the main breaker panel check to see if the short went away, and give it power. Head back to the light switch. At this point, I'm going to check for voltage, and we have 120 volts across this light switch. Best I can tell is this previous junction box used to be a switched outlet, which someone disconnected, and then wired black to black and white to white. As soon as you flip the light switch, you get a dead short. To make everything safe, I'm going to remove the hot and the neutral from this light switch, wire nut them, and put everything back in the box. And now at this point, it's basically clean up by putting all the covers back on, making sure all of the screws are aligned for everyone out there who's got OCD. And I could remove a few of these cobwebs, but I don't have that much time. Last but not least, the main cover goes back on. Once I get that buttoned up, the breaker continues to hold. Now I just get to test the lights and outlets. I finally got lights in what would be the office area and in the storage area. And now finally we have power back to the outlets. But done with this and on to the next project.